Fair enough. So now some of you dads are like, oh, I've never tried that one before, okay? Uh, how many of you think that's real news? How many of you think it's fake news? How many of you aren't going to raise your hand no matter how many times I do this? All right. All right, good. Uh, you just raised your hand. I caught you. Okay. That's real news. Real news. What a dad. Now that is a dad. <coughs> Son, you got a loose tooth? Come on. It's not loose. That's all right. Let's come on over here. We'll get it. Here's another one. Man sues girlfriend for putting golden retriever in tutu. Man sues girlfriend for putting golden retriever in tutu. How many think that's real news? How many think it's fake news? Fake news! Fake news, sorry. Don't buy into that one. I mean, maybe it has happened. I couldn't find it online uh, if it has happened. All right, here we go. Here's another one. This is a good one. Uh, goats in police custody after chasing children. Goats in police custody after chasing children. How many think that's real news? Some of you think, like, let's arrest those goats. Absolutely. How many think that's fake news? Fake news. That is real news. That is a real story. Did somebody just say hallelujah? I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Florida woman looks under bed for cat. Finds burglar. <laughs> Florida woman looks under bed for cat. Here, here, honey, honey, where are you? Where are you? Oh, hi. Meow. <laughs> yeah. You know, all right. Real news? Who thinks that's real news? Who thinks that's fake news? That is real news. What a day for her, huh? All right, I just have two more. Vikings win Super Bowl in 2020. <laughs> hey! Real news! Yeah! Fake, I'm fake. Everyone. Okay. You need, you need Jesus. I just pray for this man over here. All right. Her, heresy. All right. Missing woman unwilling, unknowingly, sorry. Missing woman unknowingly joins a search party looking for herself. <laughs> Missing woman unknowingly joins search party looking for herself. How many of you think that's real news? How many of you really want it to be real news, huh? How many of you think that's fake? That is real news. I hope they found her. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, we could go 30 minutes with the headlines I found, but we do want to move forward. It's, it's interesting that the, the season, the, the culture that we live in, the era that we live in, and the music that hits the fan, and, uh, and how quickly it can be twisted. How quickly it can turn from uh, a real news story to about 70% true, to about 25% true, to absolutely 100% fake news, right? But, but this isn't necessarily anything new. This isn't just because we live in 2019 that, that we, have it, uh, we live in an era where there's fake news. Fake news has been going on for thousands of years. In fact, when we read through the resurrection story, there's a passage of scripture in Matthew that shows us that there was people who purposely spread fake news. If you have a Bible, you can open up to Matthew 28, and as you're getting there, I kind of paraphrase the first couple verses, uh, first 10, 11 verses here. Uh, in, in verse 1, it says, after, they, after the Sabbath, so Jesus died on Friday afternoon, Friday night, Sabbath day on Saturday, and, and then so Sunday morning, they go to the tomb, Mary and Mary Mag Magdalene and the other Mary, and they find that the tomb is open. An angel, there was an earthquake. And an angel rolled away the stone. It says that the guards were so stuck in fear that they were frozen like dead men. And, and then the angel says, hey, I know why you're here. I know who you're looking for. Jesus Christ, the crucified one. But then he says this phrase, he is not here, he is risen. I love that phrase. You're looking for a dead guy. You came to the wrong tomb. He is risen. And so the angel says, go quickly and tell the disciples that he's risen from the dead. There, you're going to see him. I have told you. In verse 8 says, the women hurried away. They were filled with joy. And suddenly Jesus meets them. Greetings, he said. And they came to him. They fell and worshipped at his feet. And Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. So this incredible moment for these two ladies, right? They go to the tomb to, to either finish the burial or... or Pay their respects to, to Jesus, this one whom they love so much, and then they are the first ones to see Jesus right What a moment for them. And so they go off with the disciples, 
uh, to tell the disciples and that whole story then blossoms into Jesus appearing to them. But then there's in the city, there's the other side of the city, there's this other part of the story that happens. And I want to read here in verse 11. It says, while the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and they reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests had met with the elders and devised a plan, they gave the soldiers a large sum of money. And they told them, you are going to say that the disciples came in the middle of the night and they stole him away while you were sleeping, which you shouldn't have been sleeping. But that's what we're going to say. And if this report gets to the governor, it will satisfy him and it's going to keep you out of a lot of trouble, probably dead. So the soldiers took the money and they did as they were instructed. And this story had been widely circulated among the Jews to this very day. So they go to the leaders and they say, we don't know what to do. We're not sure what happened. We, we were there and then there was this earthquake and then this angel showed up and he, he was like lightning and he was dressed in all white and, and he physically, we don't know how, but he moved that tomb that was sealed with the Roman seal. We're not sure physically how he was able to do it, but he did. And then, and then out walks Jesus and we were frozen. We didn't know what to think. What, what should we do? And you can imagine this moment of fear with these religious leaders because they did everything they could to squash Jesus. And all of their nightmares are coming true right now. And they're pacing. They're thinking, no, 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 no. We thought we stopped him. They said, okay, okay, here's what you're going to say. You're, you're going to say that the disciples came all in the middle of the night while you were sleeping. But we weren't sleeping. But you're going to tell people you were. And, and, and that they stole his body. Okay, and then you're not going to be in trouble, and then hopefully people aren't going to believe this whole resurrection thing, and, and they'll buy into the fact that the disciples stole him because they want to trick us because he said he was going to come back, so you know, yada, 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 and they create this fake news. And Matthew says that this news has spread till this day. Now, Matthew was written about, we'll say, 85, year 85, <coughs> so 40 to 50 years after Jesus was uh, was crucified and rose again. And so for 40 to 50 years, word had spread and people were buying into the fake news that Jesus actually never rose from the dead. They were buying into the news that somebody came and just stole his body and that he really wasn't the son of God. He was just a really good guy who did a lot of great things and then died. And Matthew said, still to this day. And the crazy thing, though, is that Still to this day, we can say still to this day, people are still believing that lie. People are still believing that fake news that Jesus was just a good guy and then he did some great things and then he just died and then that was the end of the story. Still to this day, people are believing the fake news. There may be some of you in here today that aren't convinced of Jesus being the Son of God. I can tell you that this is fake news. Jesus being stolen, his body being stolen. I, I can tell you this is fake news because over 500 people, the Bible says over 500 people saw Jesus after he was raised from the dead. You can't make, you, the, over 500 people don't just come up with the same story, okay? I, I can tell a story to this group right here, and we're not 500 in this room, and we go out, and we're all going to tell a different version of that story, except these 500 people, all eyewitness accounts of the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. They saw him. This is not fake news that he was stolen. They, the, the Old Testament has over 300 prophecies that Jesus fulfilled. The one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, fulfilled over 300 prophecies from the first half of the Bible. Hundreds of years before he showed up. And they said this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen. And lo and behold, guess what happened? Every one of those he fulfilled. Even the disciples themselves. If you were to logistically think about this. The very disciples that these soldiers said stole his body and made up a lie, every one of them except one of them, John, every one of them except John, gave their life for Jesus. Physically, were willing to die for the name of Jesus. Now, if I was somebody who made up a lie and it got me to the point where I was going to die and somebody was going to kill me, at that point I'd have said, hey, 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 just... Joke's on you, hi, from Bulls, it was a joke, it was not true, don't kill me. And so for these men, if, if they would have had made that up, you'd think at some point they'd have said, hey, it was a joke, I don't have to die. But every one of them went to their death with joy in their heart and said, I'm so honored to carry the name of Jesus. Do what you want to me. He has so moved me, he has so... 
changed my life. He has so radically changed my perspective and I can't wait to see him face to face. I can't wait for the hope of it. I just, I can't wait. So do what you physically need to do to me. I will not forsake the name of Christ. Even if we hop outside of the Bible and just talk historically, there's a guy named Josephus. And Josephus was a, a first century historian. And he speaks of a man named Jesus who was a wise man doer of startling deeds, a teacher of the people. He gained many uh, among the Jews and the Gentiles, a following. He said Pilate condemned him to the cross, yet those who loved him did not cease to do so. He came back three days later, Josephus says, and until this very day, this is Josephus writing at the end of the first century, until this very day, the tribe of Christians had not died out. So even Josephus, a first century uh, historian, said, yeah, this guy named Jesus existed, and he rose from the dead, and those that followed him are continuing to follow him, so it must not be fake news. I can tell you why this story of the, the Roman soldiers making, I can tell you why that's fake news, because ever since, ever since then, the gospel, the, the story of Jesus has done nothing but grow. It has, been, it has done nothing but spread. It's done nothing but continue to reach to every corner of the globe. Why do we say corner of the globe, by the way? I don't even know. I just said that and I thought there is. But anyways, to every area, every surface area of the globe, right? And all through history, there's been moments when the enemy has tried to squash the movement of the gospel. It's tried to hinder and restrict the name of Jesus being spread. And all that's done is cause it to grow even further. There's countries in this world where it's illegal to be a Christian, and those are the countries that the gospel is spreading the fastest. Because God refuses to let the story of Jesus be stopped. Even in Acts, there's a story in Acts chapter 5 where the disciples were being arrested, and they were going to be killed for preaching the gospel. And this guy named Gamaliel stands up and says, hey guys, can I just speak my mind? And he says, in the present case, this is Acts 5.38, I want to advise you, leave these guys alone. Let them go. This is, this is so powerful. If the purpose of their activity is human origin, it's going to fail. As in, if what they've created and done is a big lie, don't worry about killing them because they're going to fail. They're going to trip over their own two feet. Don't worry about them. If, they, if what they're doing is made up, however, he says, if this is from God, you're not going to stop them. You're only going to find yourself fighting God. <clears throat> I can tell you why the story of the soldiers is fake news. Personally. I mean, if we leave all that to the side, personally, I could, year after year of my life, I can point to moments where God has spoken to me, where God has... I've been so overwhelmed with the presence of God, and I know he's alive in my heart, and, and, and he's answered prayers that I've prayed, and he's led me step by step. We can take you to moments in our marriage and, and in our life as a ministry when, when, when we've seen young people and, and, and teenagers, and we've seen uh, moms and dads and grandmas and grandmas where the light bulb has come on, and it's shifted from them from just a religion to a relationship where they recognize this is no longer just, it's not about serving some dead being out there that has a bunch of rules for us to live so that hopefully I can experience some level of eternal life and happiness and joy. And the, and the light bulb goes on and they recognize this is about having a relationship with a God who's alive and well and loves me so much and I want to serve him and I want to love him and I want to commit my life to him. And the light bulb goes on and we've seen that with people after people, person after person after person after person. And I can tell you that the story of him being stolen is fake news. The truth is, Jesus Christ <coughs> world, rose back from the dead, conquered death, and has an eternal home waiting for you and for me. That should make you jump out of your socks. The question that remains is, oh, why? I mean, really, for, for me, the question is, why? Why does he do that? Why did he raise from the dead? Why did he go to the cross even though he didn't do anyone wrong? Just and let them kill him so that he could then raise him. That wouldn't have been easier just to not let him let them kill him. He's coming back to life. The simple answer to that is because he loved. <coughs> he loves him so much. Love compelled him 
to do what he did. He was driven by love. He's so madly and passionately affectionate towards you. He, he, he has an undying, never-ending, always and forever love for you. And nothing that you could ever do or say will change that. And that's the answer to why. Yeah. Why did he do this? He's the only God that is compelled by love towards the people he created. Everything he does is out of his heart of love. And he couldn't stand the fact that he would potentially be separated from you forever because of, of the sin in our life and because of sin entering the world and, 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 and the, the damnation that we would experience without a relationship with the Lord. He couldn't stand that. It, 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 would, it broke his heart to think that he would be separated from his very children, his very creation. And so he came up with his own plan. I love how it says in that story, they devised a plan. I just, I, I love the concept that they're trying to devise a plan when God's in heaven shaking his head saying, no, I devised the plan. I'm the one that made the plan and you're stuck with it. And my plan is I'm going to send my son to the earth for all mankind and we're going to conquer death together. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world. Put your name in there. For God so loved Dan. For God so loved your name, that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. If you're not convinced today about God's love for you, think I'm not worthy, I've made too many mistakes. <laughs> How could a God love a person like me? I've been told this about me. I've been told that about me. And, and you're, in that, you're in that situation of feeling that you're buying into fake news. You're buying into a lie that the enemy wants you to think. God loves you with an undying love. Scripture says that while you were still a sinner, he died for you. So even when, even when you weren't returning the love back towards him, even when I wasn't returning my love back towards him is when he died for me. If you think you, 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 you're not convinced of, uh, of heaven, being, or the only way to heaven is through Christ, and, and, and you think, well, if I'm successful, or God won't send good people to hell, or, or if I just uh, help a lot of people, if, if all the good things I do outweigh all the bad things I do, Right, then I can have then I can have eternal life in heaven. And those are the thoughts in here. And, uh, as gently as I can tell you, I want to say you're, you're believing fake news. There's one route to heaven. There's one name that it will be the ticket to eternal life, and his name is Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I believe him when he says that because he conquered the grave. If he died. And didn't come back, then we wouldn't have to believe everything he <clears> said. <throat> but he did come back. And so it takes it makes every word that he says, we should hang on every word that he says and buy into it with all of our heart and say, Well, I'm gonna trust this guy because not only did he die for all mankind, he rose again to conquer death for eternity. 